At an event like this, always a lot of time is spent thanking people. And the more people you thank individually, the more likely you are to miss someone who should be thanked. I'm going to restrict my thanks to two very broad groups. First, to the people of Asheville and Buncom County who love their libraries. And I appreciate all of you coming out on this Tuesday afternoon. We've had occasions like this across the county as we've dedicated new libraries, and every one of them is a pleasure just to see and talk to the people who love their libraries. The second group that I want to thank is the PAC library staff. And there are a few of them here. Some, most of them are actually working because the library is open. Uh, but I'm thinking back a year ago, January, February, worst winter we had seen until maybe this one. Um, <laughs> Staff upstairs working in their coats in 50, 55 degrees because the building had already been opened up by the contractors. And these people brought us through. A quarter of a million items boxed, unboxed, reshelled, cleaned. The work that went into this project by the library staff is incredible. And I, will, oh, I think I will always remember that is the first memory I have of this staff. So thank you. Um, now it's my pleasure, and I really do get all the fun jobs today, to introduce our special speaker. And that is Elizabeth Costaba. And I think this is the third time it's, I've been able to introduce Elizabeth. And uh, I think the most important thing I want to say about her today, besides the fact that I'm sure you all know, she's written two best-selling novels, The Historian and The Swan Thieves. You may not know about an earlier book that she worked on about 16 years ago with Anthony Lord called 1927, A Good-Natured Recollection of a Journey. And that's when I first met her, was when she was working on that book. Uh, Elizabeth's Asheville roots go back quite deep, uh, and she'll tell, maybe tell you a little bit about that. But most importantly, what I want to say about Elizabeth is Elizabeth is really a librarian, <laughs> and it's genetic. Uh, sitting behind her is her mother, a librarian, her grandmother, a librarian. How she missed it, I'm not sure quite sure, but she is contributing to libraries by putting wonderful books into them. So Elizabeth, will you speak with us today? As an author on book tours, I'm frequently invited to read at public libraries. In fact, I seek out library readings whenever I can. Our gathering today reminds me of an experience I had on tour almost exactly a year ago. I was waiting to step out on the auditorium stage at a very large and patrician library, an historic library, in a northeastern city I will leave unnamed. Curious, as always, about the health of libraries, I asked the program director how things were going there. His face fell. We were supposed to have a major renovation done by now, he said. We began three years ago and got about halfway through. And then the stock market crashed, and the city fathers decided this was not a high enough priority. If you walk down that hall there, he said, you'll see rooms that are half finished, emptied out, and just boarded up for now. We don't know when we'll even be able to start again. I commence with this depressing story, not to dampen the proceedings in any way, but to point out how lucky we are as a community. Pack Memorial Library is open. It is newly equipped to serve us all, and it is beautiful. The efforts of countless citizens have gone into this project. And as my story illustrates, we owe a special debt to our own city and county fathers and mothers who have understood the deep importance of this library to Asheville and the importance of funding libraries in hard times. We're 
actually doing something that's fairly rare in Buncombe County world and rare in the library. Uh, we're naming rooms for two people. Mary Parker's been an active part of this library for more than 60 years. That's not counting her childhood as being a library patron. She was active in the state. She was president of Friends of North Carolina Libraries. Um, she literally did every job there was a volunteer could do at Pack Library, and she loves this library. Uh, Mary was a big part of the effort, the campaign, to get this building built in the first place. And because of her friendship with Tony Lord and George Stevens and this whole group who were on the library board for many, many years, getting this building built was about a 30-year process. And Mary was there for almost all of it. When this building became what it is today in 1978, Mary started the book sale. So for the first time, we had the Friends of the Library book sale. And over the years, the ensuing almost 30 years since the book sale started, it's brought in several hundreds of thousands of dollars to support the Friends and Library programs. So we think, and we want to thank both the Library Board and the County Commissioners for agreeing to this, to name the Friends of the Library bookstore up on the main floor for, in honor, of Mary Parker. So, so Mary, I wish you were here, um, but she couldn't be with us this afternoon, and, uh, but she will uh, be back, I am sure. The second person we're going to talk about is here. And this, this will make it a little harder for me because I, have to, I now have to be pretty serious and straight because John Bridges hired me. <laughs> We're going to name the children's activity room, which is the next room as you go out the auditorium to the right, for John. And a couple of the staff members said, well, why are you naming the children's activity room for Mr. Bridges? He was Mr. Culture here in Asheville. Uh, we think of him with chamber music, reviews in the newspaper about the Asheville Symphony. Um, well, for many years, John was our children's program. And he did programs such as see a film, read a book, way back into the 1950s. It's a, with a great deal of pleasure that I can look at John Bridges and tell him that that children's activity room will bear his name. Thank you, John. You have no idea how gratifying it is to have lived through all of these changes and improvements every single time. And I thought today how wonderful we finally got the auditorium turned around <laughs> where it should be. So I am most and appreciate your, your courtesy in naming a room for me because I have spent hours, days, months, and years in this library and never regretted a moment of it. You know, when this was built, in November of 1975, 78, it was half city paid for it, half, half county paid for it. It's always been an important part of who we are and what we are. And you know, one of the most amazing things I found when I became a commissioner is that there is no legal requirement for libraries in North Carolina. It's shocking. And I thank people that came before us, the vision of folks, that we need libraries. We need libraries in every community, and we try to do that, but this is the cornerstone. We actually changed the policy of Buncombe County to honor folks that were living, and when we did that, we knew there were two people here that needed to be honored, and you prompted a change that had been on the books for 50 years, and I think it was a change that was long overdue to honor people like you. Thank you so much. The construction <laughs> amazingly finished four months early. Amen. And that was because of some folks I want to talk about. Number one, Wanda Green, the county manager who's working on some last minute research for our meeting today. John Creighton. John is here somewhere. He's always in the background, never in the front, but he's always working it. And Greg Israel, I think, is also here. 
They made this happen. They made it happen four months before it was supposed to. So let's give them a hand.